the Sports Vote Campaign Podcast. Invest in sports. Welcome back. Today is Easter Sunday, 2021, April 4th, 2021, and here's the Sports Vote Campaign update. So the coronavirus has restructured the economy in a very unique way. In spite of all the hype that you see in the news from some channels or some venues, this recovery is going to take a while. I would say that the real climb out is going to start in 2022. Uh, 2021 is really just a staging ground for that, and it's going to take years to get out of this. Uh, What comes uh, down, things come down much faster than they go back up. Correction from the last podcast, uh, the NFL Futures were withdrawn before they were denied. So they knew they were going to be denied. Really, the effect is the same, but I said that the NFL futures had been denied. They were actually withdrawn prior to being denied. So uh, please do continue, those of you that have accounts uh, with ASM, continue to trade with the bonus margin because it does build the data model, which is important for us, and it also builds your account value pending the conversion as described on the notice board uh, in that video. Uh, concerning bonus margin. Another correction, one and a half million dollars to rebuild ASM. I said over five years. It's really more than over six years at this point, over six years. So, um, you know, given given what was done with that and reestablishing everything and all the publicity and the people we had to hire, uh, that's not a lot. Uh, again, the rental property that uh, Ace and I live in here is worth more than that. So, and it's not a mansion. It's <laughs> not by any stretch, not in this in this t- uh, part of the world. So, if you're tired of a crashing economy, um, I don't know. I've seen, goodness, five six crashes now, and in, in my adult lifetime, uh, maybe we need some new thing, like maybe sports investing. So. Again, the keys to the kingdom for us and for everybody else, um, meaning everyone wins, the stakeholders, the sports industry, the public at large, everybody uh, is going to benefit from this. It's just one single uh, fundraise, league fundraise, whether it's esports or regular sports. Again, look at the show notes for, uh, for the links and such. We even have a submission link there where you can submit the details of your uh, league, our league idea to vet with the, with the team. So uh, World uh, WWE and DraftKings uh, partnership, uh, that's ridiculous. I um, grew up in Louisiana, and I knew many professional wrestlers. Some of their um, my friends' parents were professional wrestlers. It is flat up and down rigged. Uh, this is just, I mean, baffling to me. It's a stage crafting job. So you're going to allow that uh, gambling on that. I mean, that's as fixed as fixed can be. So Visa is looking at uh, stable coins, stable coins uh, as a part of their infrastructure. This is basically just a blockchain backstop uh, and, you know, blockchain backstop to the network. This is not the same thing as what's happening in the general crypto marketplace, uh, creating funny money out of thin air. So, uh, I guess the DraftKings strategy is to overwhelm the marketplace with advertising um, as if people don't know where to gamble already. Uh, People do already know where to gamble. This is not something new by any means, uh, not even close. So I guess it's just flood the channel with with, uh, lots of advertising, maybe to create a few few new addicts. Uh, I don't think you have to convince people of something they already do. And again, I'm going to say this over and again. Uh, We discussed this more than 20 years ago in in my sports book experience that basically created ASM from Costa Rica, that the offshore market is always going to beat the onshore market because they're going to be able to offer better prices, meaning better lines. And also the big issue, and this is huge, is reporting to tax authorities and regulators. Uh, People don't like that. Uh, You know, just look at the public chatter that's going on about the disclosure requirements uh, from DraftKings and, and the resistance to that. And for every one of those comments, there's 10 or 20 people think that are in the same mindset. So looks like everybody's watching New York to see if they go with mobile. Looks like it's a 50-50 chance here. Lots of competition is going to come into that marketplace. Uh, no matter what, I would not accrue that to DraftKings, even if it happens. 
And I've been in radio uh, and, you know, electronics since I was a child. And I was the youngest licensed technician in my home state when I was about 15. Um, I actually had a state contract uh, to, to repair electronic gear and stuff. And so don't talk to me about geofencing. I was also an amateur radio operator. Um, there is no such thing. Radio waves do not stop on, on boundaries. This is all a bunch of bullshit that's uh, designed to baffle the public and make them think something exists that doesn't exist. It does not exist. It does not exist. Geofencing is impossible. You cannot wire fence or otherwise block in radio waves. It's insane. So the Wire Act, 60-year-old law, makes all this a moot discussion because you can't move money or information about bets or bets or anything related to bets across state lines, period, 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 period. I don't know how. Look, either we're going to decide that we have laws in this country or we're just going to let everybody do whatever they want. You can't have it both ways. This is an anti-corruption statute a super precedent that's been on the books for more than 60 years. And if this is not going to be enforced, then screw the whole thing. Why don't we just close the courts and just forget about all of it? Because it's hypocrisy at the highest level. We're not talking about a precedent that came down last week in a district court somewhere. We're talking about a 60-year-old super precedent that used to strike terror in the, in the hearts of and minds of the operators offshore. I can remember their number. They never even talked about pass, but I can remember maybe one or two conversations about pass, but everything was focused on, on the, uh, the wire act and, and the possible Rico charges that could come out of it if you were caught. So this is hypocrisy at the absolute highest level. It is either you're going to enforce this law. If you don't enforce this law, frankly, don't talk to me about the law at all. I don't want to hear about it because you're just a bunch of hypocrites. So PayPal is getting even deeper into the crypto game. This is nothing new. Um, you know, instead of uh, focusing on their real customers and stopping with their arbitrary policies of freezing accounts, for example, and making the vendor fight you for fight them for six months, they're going to go with the gambling outfit, I guess, and gamble on cryptos instead, which makes total sense. Um, Trump defamation suit. So uh, new one. Uh, there's going to be more. Liars will have their day. Liars will have their day. So Biden has an infrastructure plan being put together. This is long overdue, um, you know, roads and bridges, among other things. I'm going to keep very close eye on this to see what um, what possible programs or routes may exist for us out there in these uh, in this infrastructure plan, because as I've said for a long time, I believe that ASM and sports investing is an infrastructure plan. Uh, the Q, Q1 2021 dividends were paid about a half million dollars on each market, about a half million uh, on each side, half million on the learning side, half million on the pilot side. So um, one of the concepts that Gary Halbert taught me, which really came um, as a surprise, believe it or not, was a concept called the greed glands, um, meaning that if you really wanted to sell something, you need, needed to just sell to people's greed. Um, most people will try to cover up their greed and give it all kinds of, you know, pretty colors, uh, you know, stories, why it's not greed, but really that's what it is. And if you want to really see things take off, you have to sell to the greed glands. Um, I don't have that in me to do. I just, I'm not wired up like that, but I do recognize that that is, uh, that's where the world is. So I did send some uh, messages off to Alper and, and, and his team to, to this effect that really, um, to make this thing sell through, uh, all the constituent parties need to have their greed glands activated. That means the governments, the leagues, etc. The good thing about ASM is that, you know, it does, it is the best prop, it is the highest profit proposition on the table. You know, it, I just don't, it's not, it's not my, my nature to sell from that side, but I realize that that's what will work. So somebody needs to do that. It needs to be sold that way to, to every party that needs to buy in to make it work, and it will deliver. So it's not a false promise, unlike the gambling guys who never, and I mean never, make their numbers. They go in and they get a, uh, a deal based on a projections that don't even come close. I mean, do your own research. Don't believe me. It's, it's all there to be found. It's always a lie. It's always way, 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 way beyond. Um, the projections are way beyond the reality of it. And they, of course, never subtract the negative side, which is all the social costs that get laid back on society 
through increased crime, through increased bankruptcies, divorces, and all those things that basically end up as charges to the state. So the unemployment rate, oh, one more thing. LinkedIn fe uh, featured one of my comments for the first time on their main news feed. Um, this is the first time I've seen this. So uh, the network building is, is going very well. And, and when the time comes, uh, this will be deployed to... Uh, to recruit leagues and do basically, you know, the uh, I've got more than 20, I think it's about 2,300 connections now. Um, this network, really the thrust of that came from my hero club days and all the travels and such. This will have its moment uh, in the future for our benefit. So the unemployment rate is not, not 6%. It is absolutely not 6%. It's at least 12%. This kind of stuff drives me berserk this constant mishandling of information in the public domain. This is not by a few percent. This is off by 100%, okay? So all you have to do to verify that is look at the ongoing unemployment claims. That's people that are still certifying every week for unemployment. It's about 18 million right now. And then you divide it by the workforce, which is 160 million. And just the sources on this, there's no disputing. These are the real numbers. There's not even any spin out there on this. It's a flat math problem. So, so they are the unemployment rate's at least twelve percent because that's not counting people who never qualified for unemployment insurance, or they timed out of unemployment insurance, or some other reason. They basically are are just not in the numbers at all. So these numbers are verifiable. They're off by a hundred percent. So I, the question becomes: So who cares, right? You know, this is a tough one. So one of the one of the really tough questions is so why should truth even matter right so why do the numbers matter so what if they report it at six percent and it's twelve percent here's why it matters okay if you look around you and you wonder why things don't feel quite like i guess the core question is why does truth matter but let's just break it down to why do the figures matter right why does it why should this number these numbers be given to us straight because first, policy decisions are made based on these numbers, okay? So that means public programs, that means all kinds of things, tax rates. So when you look around you and you you feel like something is wrong, right? You see these numbers and you look at your life and you, you look and if something doesn't match, this is the reason, okay? When, when, this is the problem with lying about this stuff, this I could make a much bigger conversation about lying in general, but we'll just stick to the numbers. The reason it matters is because that's why the reality of your life doesn't match up with the hype you see in the news, because it's a lie. That's why, you know, if the unemployment rate was truly 6%, the economy would look a lot different than it does, a lot different. I would say it's really about 15, and if you want to count underemployed, it's closer to 18%, okay? So we're talking about twice to three times under counting. So when people are sitting at home wondering why they're depressed and why they don't have a job and why they can't pay the rent and why their life is not matching up with the ads, because, you know, the news comes, oh, jobs report, 900,000 new jobs, and, whoa, it's great, it's blowout numbers, blah, 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 blah. And you look around, you go, but wait a second, that's not my story. This is the reason it matters. So... I don't know what to do about this, but it really burns my ass. And if I can figure out how to get this information out, I do what I can. I challenge the editors on LinkedIn that post up stories and get them angry with me. I'm like, well, they, you can get angry all you want. I, what have I said that's wrong here? Okay. Why are you guys doing this? Why, why are you puffing the numbers up a hundred percent? You're giving people a false picture of the world, which causes all kinds of problems. I mean, can cause people to commit suicide at the absolute extreme. At, at minimum, it's going to make them feel like they're doing something wrong when they're not doing anything wrong. They're being lied to. And that's across the board. This is not a Fox versus CNN versus XYZ versus, uh, you know, whatever news channel. They're all doing it. All of them. Absolutely all of them are misrepresenting this information. So, Anyway, that's all. Uh, I hope you have a nice Easter if that's meaningful for you. Uh, you know, I'm not going to make any claims there on what the audience thinks of Easter, but this is Easter Sunday and we do, are still in a pandemic. Please be careful. Um, I, you know, I have personal contact with stories that are, I mean, there are people that are still dying of this. Um, you know, this is not flu season. So uh, please uh, forward this to anybody that you think might be interested including older ASM account holders that maybe have lost track of us. 
review it if you feel so inclined, and subscribe if you want to be notified when the new episodes come out. Thank you for your time, and have a nice afternoon.